Hey guys, welcome back to part 4 of my 3D modeling tutorial for 3D Studio Max. Today we're going to continue the block out of this M4A1 assault rifle, but before we get into the trigger housing area here, I just kind of want to go back and fix a couple of things on this pistol grip that we did last time. Um, just when I opened up the file today, I kind of thought I could have done better with the geometry here and just kind of approached this whole modeling process that we did here in a little bit of a different way. So I'm going to make a clone of this pistol group we have here first. Make sure that it's a copy, not an instance. Um, and pistol grip 001 is fine. We're just going to hide this one really quick. And then we're going to go to the regular pistol grip that's still visible at the moment. And we're just going to start editing. And I've realized that I made um, a major mistake last time, at least in my eyes I think I did just because I wanted to keep the geometry a little cleaner than that and a little less complicated so I just turned on an edge constraint to kind of morph those two lines together and now they're perfectly identical so it's almost like we're starting completely from scratch and uh, I'm going to un or hide all the other unselected objects really quick and when I just deleted that line there that I had selected I'm going to undo that I'm going to hit con hold control and press backspace and that way we don't have to worry about deleting the vertex points that would have been at the end of the line there. Um, oops, I'm just going to bridge these back faces here for just a moment. Cap that off. Now we can delete that again. That was just an easy way to, to cap off our top segment there. Now what I want to do is just chamfer this edge and you'll see what chamfer does. Chamfer just um, splits an edge and turns it into two or more segments. I'm going to turn it into, um, I'm going to put two edge segments there, but you'll see that there are going to be three left over here. Um, I'm going to scale that down to where it's matching in my reference viewport here. Um, then I'm going to hit check mark on there. I'm going to select the bottom edges one more time and then we're going to hold shift and drag out an extrusion here. And then I'm going to turn on my angle snaps by pressing A or you can just turn them on up here. And What that does is it'll just snap while we rotate every five degrees so that way we won't be working with like thousandths or uh, hundredths of a, uh, of a degree point or whatever just with exact values of um, five. So before I actually rotate, I want to go into vertex mode here, expand that out a little bit. And what I found when I was looking at um, reference images of old um, M4 style pistol grips or whatever is that for one, this angle down at the bottom of the grip is not as drastic as it is in my reference image here. So I think with just that little bit of a turn here, we're going to get the effect that we want. Well, maybe just a little more. There we go. And also, um, they aren't as um, beefy looking as this um, custom grip here. And I just kind of want to take down the volume of our uh, pistol grip a little bit to make it look a little more authentic. And um, <clears throat> I think we're going to get that this time around, especially since I've kind of tinkered around with a few ideas of how to do this quickly and efficiently. Um, what I just did there was add another edge loop. I'm going to throw an edge constraint onto that and since we're working with all these angled lines that's important to me because I want to kind of keep my straight lines and uh, I don't want to mess up the uh, orientation of any of the faces here. It's just an easy way to keep things clean. Um, I'm going to select this top here, copy the Z value while this uh, edge constraint is still on. There we go. I think I might straighten this out just a little bit more. Or actually get a little more of an angle here. Yeah, I think we're doing pretty good there. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just delete that line there. Oh. I'm going to hold control and backspace so we have to get rid of that bottom vertex there. And then I'm going to connect these two points. Now we have this triangle up in here. I'm going to ring this, connect it again. 
And with our edge constraints on, we're just going to move this inward a little bit. And then I'm going to bring it out while I have my edge constraint turned off. And I'm just going to move it out on the Y value. Look at that, and we're finally getting somewhere. Now we've got a really cool looking shape here. And I think the reason I wasn't thinking this way last time was either because I was rushing through it or I just didn't really take my time to think about how to approach the problem. And, you know, go, coming back to a project after you've taken some time away or taken at least a 20 minute break or something like that really can do a lot for your thinking process and just how you tackle every problem. So normally the best thing to do is like every hour or so you take about 10-15 minutes to step back and kind of just, you know, let your mind reset while you're, um, while you're in the middle of a project. It's just, it, sometimes it gets to be too much and you're not thinking clearly when you're trying to solve all these problems. Right, and with that new line here I just uh, connected I'm going to connect some dots up here I know normally I don't want triangles in my geometry but this time around it's gonna be okay um, this is gonna be a flat area and a surface anyway so I'm not really worried about having any crazy smoothing groups or anything like that going on um, actually before I move that line out or anything I want to move this into position a little better Um, you'll notice none of my reference image matters right now. It's just, you'll see that there's this little tiny bit of a bend up here where the uh, shape of the rest of the grip kind of bumps out and gets this um, wider volume. And this top area on your, uh, your pistol grip here is just perfectly flat. So I just kind of want to get that little bit of a curve in here and the way it curves around um, almost in a parallel kind of fashion to this outline here to the entire pistol grip so that's pretty much all I'm trying to imitate with this and then I'm going to connect these edges again there we go oops I think I'm actually just going to move this vertex point out for the moment. Alright. Next thing I'm going to do is normally at the bottom of these, um, just like in this reference image, there's a bit of a curve at the uh, butt end of the pistol grip. So I'm just going to throw another edge constraint on there. Just kind of move those up kind of imitate that curve and there we go then I'm going to connect these edges with the edge constraints still on now we have a perfect copy of the bottom edge since we've kind of moved them into one another I'm going to bring that up just a little bit here I'm going to extrude this out. Actually, I'm just going to use this face here. Extrude that out. And now, right now, it looks like nothing. But we're going to bring that to... Oh, I'm going to turn the constraints off for a second. I'm going to bring this to the y-axis 0. I'm going to turn the edge constraints back on. just going to bring that in a little bit to create that notch at the bottom of our uh, pistol grip there. Select this top line and bring that down a little. And this obviously has to come up a little. And then 
and I'm going to bring this in a little. And I think this line out here, I'm just going to bring that outward just one more bit. I'm going to undo that so you can actually see that um, while the viewport's expanded. I'm just going to bring that out just a little bit to bring a little more roundness to the shape and curve for the entire piece here. All right, and I'm pretty happy with that. Now I'm going to take these lines that I selected on the inside here scale them all down to make them flat yep and they're on the zero point there well maybe I'll scale them one more time for good measure all right now I'm going to just bridge these open ends here. There we go. And that would pretty much be the block out for our new pistol grip. Now what I want to do is kind of arrange the smoothing groups a little bit. And I'm going to give this whole thing up here, smoothing group one. Looks like that's already there. I'm going to give this one smoothing group two and three. And this one's going to be three as well. Actually, I'm going to make that whole bottom smoothing group three. And then we'll just select the way bottom here, the flat piece. Be smoothing group one again and the top face here has to be something different um, I'm gonna make that one smoothing group two I guess there we go and now we are back to having a pretty good pistol grip and I'm gonna move the other one out let you be the judge of which one's better or worse I personally like our new one a little better because it's a lot cleaner geometry. It's a little more of an exact measurement kind of thing. And uh, it'll go really well with the final looking product better. And also the lines are cleaner for us to edit an, a high poly uh, version off of later on. So I'm going to stick with the one on the left here and I'm going to delete the one on the right since I don't need it anymore. And now that we're, we got that out of the way, I'm going to start with the... Um, trigger um, housing area here. So I'm going to start with a standard primitive cylinder. I'm going to start with an 18-sided cylinder. Kind of give it pretty good thickness there. Um, one thing we're going to have to do here differently than we normally do is I'm actually going to bring this um, going to bring this height value down to maybe something like 10. And uh, what we have to do differently here is we want to center this perfectly with the other object. So what I'm going to do is come to the hierarchy panel up here, which is next to modify. And we're going to select effect pivot only. Well, once we have that selected, we can edit the pivots position, but we won't actually affect the object's position. And what I want to do is center that pivot directly to the object center which means now it's not going to be at the end piece anymore. It's going to be perfectly in the center of this perfect cylinder. And uh, now that we have that, I can just center that perfectly on the Y value. Zero. There we go. And now I'm going to use my scale tool. Scale that in a little bit more. You'll notice that the trigger housing is inset a little bit from your... Um, from the remaining width or whatever of the uh, receiver and the pistol grip here in the magazine chamber or holding area. Um, so now that I have this cylinder, I'm going to convert it to an editable poly. Move that into position just a little bit more.
mode, right? And uh, I'm actually going to clone this copy. I'm going to call that um, I'm going to call this trigger housing 02 and uh, this is going to come into play later on so I'm just going to hide that selection for now on uh, for now at least and um, we're going to call this just trigger housing there we go and uh, one thing we got to do here is delete the end faces there we go and now what you'll notice is our faces are pointing outward and I actually want them to be facing the other direction so what I'm gonna do is select all of the faces of our object and then I'm going to flip them and what that did was it just turned the faces inside out so now that they're facing the other direction and uh, one thing I'm gonna do here is ring connect and you'll see that our line fell perfectly on zero because we centered it there earlier. All right. And now I'm going to select the outline here. And I'm going to select my scale tool. And while I'm on uniform scale, I'm just going to hold shift and scale everything out. And there we go. And there are just a few more things we have to edit here before we can call it a day with the trigger housing. Um, all right, these two I'm going to scale flat on the Y axis and I'm going to bring them towards the bottom of my trigger housing areas and then move them around just a little bit here. I'm going to make this point flat here. Move that out and flatten it a little more again. And I'm going to do the same thing again on the other side. Alright, and if you're noticing that I'm not giving so much instruction this time around, it's really because we're kind of doing the same exact thing we've been doing before, just applying our methods in different ways, trying to be a, a little more creative in uh, approaching the problems here. But, um, it, I mean, essentially all the work we're doing is still the same. And just since I'm a perfectionist, I'm going to flatten these edges up here as well. And I think I'm going to move things upward just a little bit, just because um, it's kind of poking out down here at the bottom of the, uh, the pistol grip. And that bothers me, so... I just had to fix it. I'm going to drag those edges out. I'm going to convert that those edges to um, vertex selection and it takes the endpoints that were selected by our edges and turns them into a vertex selection um, which makes it easier to kind of um, work from time to time. Then I'm going to set this to Y value 0 and now you'll notice if I zoom in over here that it's still not Kind of piece together all the way and the reason that is is because we have to weld the uh, the verts together and um, I'm just going to select drag select over these so that both the vertex points that are occupying the same space are all selected I'm just going to click weld and now you'll see if I just singularly select the vertex it's welded together 
um, that problem was easily fixed. And if it didn't fix that for you, you can change the weld thresh threshold over here by just changing the settings and just upping that. But normally what we just keep it at is 0.1 or 0 0.01 and uh, it should weld together if they were in the exact same coordinate space. Alright, another thing I want to do before we move on to anything else is, and I think for a blackout we're pretty golden here, this is more than enough to kind of work as a base to to get an idea of our scale and silhouette. So before we move on to anything else, I just want to change the colors on these things really quick to make the uh, wireframe a little more visible. So I'm going to select all of these objects and change the colors um, all together. I'm going to change them to black. And you'll notice now we have a completely black object. I'm going to reselect all of those and then press M for my map editor. And then I'm just going to select this second blank default um, material here and I'll just apply that to all of them and now we have black lines on top of this gray uh, material and it's just easier for me to to look at um, if, if you wanted a different color you can just change that under diffuse here and um, also reflectivity it really doesn't matter you can change anything you wanted about the material I just find this a lot easier to look at and then what I'm going to do is attach the trigger housing since it's practically part of our um, part of our receiver so moving on I kind of want to start creating some different shapes here so that we're not just stuck with the receiver and the pistol grip the entire time I'm gonna create uh, the barrel shape first so I'm gonna create another cylinder I'm gonna get out of this material editor over here create another cylinder um, I'm gonna keep the 18 size if I really need to get rid of some of those sides it's easy to change a barrel I mean it's just a cylinder really that we have to edit nothing too complicated about that and then I'm going to center the barrel on the um, pivot point that we had for our upper receiver and the reason I'm doing that is because on the M4s and M16s the barrels pretty much come straight out of that long cylinder shape that we created earlier for the upper receiver which is where the bolt is housed and like I was explaining that pretty much carries the whole length of the rifle and I mean if we have that perfectly centered on one another then we really don't have to worry about much else and I also centered that on the Y value zero um, yeah I mean even if your reference image is a little bit off or skewed or something because of the angle that the picture was taken or however they drew their their painting that you're using it's it's really more dependent on your max coordinates than than the reference image we don't have to copy reference images exactly as long as we know what's correct we're really just trying to get a feel for it from the reference we're not trying to, to trace it entirely. Um, so now we're going to go back to modify the height of this. And then I'm going to kind of align this to the end of my... Um, there we go. Perfect pivot point to pivot point actually worked out just fine for me alright and now I'm going to take down the height a little more again there we go that seems to be good I'm gonna change the radius and we're doing great so far now I'm gonna convert this to an editable poly and just because it's easy to we're gonna throw in a couple of edge loops here and just kind of give this cylinder a little bit more shape. All right, and I'm really just following the reference on this because, I mean, the barrel, as long as we have the uh, general shape correct, we're uh, not going to have to worry about too much else. I'm going to scale that inward. Then I'm going to select the faces here, actually. And I'm going to extrude those outward. 
but since we have the setting up you'll see that I don't want it to be skewed like it is here I want to change from the group extrusion setting to local norm and now you'll see it'll extrude outward um, just like when we were working on our receiver now we're going to scale that down there we go and now I'm going to scale the faces in on the x-axis a little bit just to kind of give that extrusion an angle and we're starting to get somewhere and I'm just going to do that color thing again just apply the blank gray material if you turn click F4 to turn on the wireframe you'll see that black on gray is actually a very clear way to see your wireframe and that's really the only reason I'm doing that is for me to see easily what the uh, wireframe looks like whether it's clean or whether it's messed up um, this, this is the easiest way for me personally to tell and um, I think I'm going to move into creating the handguard now now for the handguard I have something different in mind I actually like the handguard on this rifle version here where it kind of covers part of our front iron sight and it's this hollowed out shape you even see the uh, the uh, cooling tube in here I'm really gonna go f more for a shape like this um, if you want to copy the the same one as in your reference image go ahead and do that it's really either way we're starting from an octo octagon and um, it, it's just gonna be a matter of you matching up and trying to um, fit your reference as best you can so I'm gonna create a cylinder and I'm starting from an octagon so I just need eight sides and um, now you'll notice with the octagon that I have the uh, the actual angled sides are all um, off on on uh, weird angles here on the side on the sides of my uh, octagon and I want the uh, flat edges to be at either 90 degree or 45 degree angles and an easy way to do that is I've actually memorized the uh, the amount of degrees you have to turn an octagon to get um, the flat edges out of that so on our X axis we're going to type in 22.5 actually nope wrong axis there we go on the Y axis my bad um, so on the Y axis you type in 22.5 and you'll get perfectly flat edges and 45 degree angles and that's really all we need and uh, now what we're going to do is align it to the pivot point on the Z, Y, X, Y, and Z axis since it's pretty much right there in the center and then I'm going to move this out to begin exactly where my hand guard is supposed to begin and um, I still have to insert a delta ring in here as well and uh, I'm gonna up the uh, radius on this just a little bit oops didn't want to do that just the height for now I'm gonna keep it almost the same as the reference image that way um, I can just edit everything later on once I have um, the rest of my object blocked out um, so now I'm going to convert this to an editable poly and I'm going to extrude this end out that looks good enough to me I'm gonna grow that selection detach we're going to call this delta ring and actually since I forgot to name all the other parts we're going to call this cylinder here the hand guard and this right here the barrel alright I'm going to change the color again and if, if you forgot the hotkey for material editor just press M or you just click on the material editor up here and you'll bring that dialog box up um, so 
now with this delta ring selected, I'm going to select this last ring loop here. And actually, you know what? I think I'm going to start with an 18-sided cylinder on that instead, since the ring is actually a lot more of a round shape. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to create 18 sides here. And you'll notice I'm not spending a whole lot of time blocking the rest of this object out, because most of these are just pretty primitive shapes. It was the hardest part that we've gotten out of our way for the block out so far, and that was the receiver, the pistol grip, and also the trigger guard, which is one of the harder parts, but really, I mean, that that itself was also pretty simple if you think about it. Um, next thing we're going to do is center this. There we go. Everything's looking great. I'm going to change the colors again. Alright, and I think like the only few hard parts that we still have left are maybe the iron sights blocking out. Um, then we'll have to finish with the top of our upper receiver and then creating the buttstock. And those, I mean, they, they might look like hard objects to create but they're not too bad. Um, we're going to come up with some pretty clever ways to uh, get around all the hard parts there. Um, actually, I'm just going to create the, uh, the cylinder here for this before we end the video. That way we have that out of the way. And we can just jump right into creating some of the more complex objects next time. Um, so just going to move that into position. I want that aligned to the same axis. There we go. Perfect. See now you'll see that there's really some um, shifting with the uh, reference image, especially with this buttstock. It looks like it's been shifted upward in the, uh, the reference image and I really want to keep this a straight line. Um, it's still going to look great and uh, it's not going to look any worse just for us doing this correctly. So no worries on that part. I'm just going to guess about how wide that would be. And I'm leaving a little bit of a gap because there is this plastic ring here that is uh, separating the receiver from the buttstock um, rod here. And I'm actually going to name that too. And we're going to change the height value some more. I think that's about as far as it goes in. All right. And just going to change the color on that. All right, and we're starting to get somewhere with our model. So, next time we get back to this, we're going to start blocking out the iron sight and then possibly we'll even get into the uh, top rail mount for the uh, the upper receiver. So I'll see you guys then and uh, until then good modeling just don't forget to save your model I'm gonna save it out save as M4A13